I uh, don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm testing out this Facebook Live thing. Um, seeing how this all works so that I can stay in contact with uh, my people. Um, see me but there's a first time for everything right It's working just fine. I wonder if you're... So, this... I uh, never thought that my prohibition of all things um, social media would come back and bite me. Um, I never thought I'd be contemplating how do I stream a mass or a conversation or anything other anything anything church related on Facebook um, but here we are um, in a new era um, but again and I'm hoping I'm pretty sure this is how it works that when I end this um, Facebook live session that it'll it'll be created as a video that uh, people can watch in the event that you don't catch this live um, but uh, we'll we'll see that too. If you, I mean, if you know the answer to that question, feel free to throw it in the comments. Um, but uh, this is about the time. This is what is it? Thursday? It's Wednesday. It's about the time that we would be um, saying mass right now. And I don't say that to to throw salt on a wound, but figure what better time to reach out than the time that, that a, a number of people would have come to the church to pray together. Um, we live in, uh, this is a, a very, um, again, like I said, an interesting time. And I'm hoping that this will be the first of many ways in which I can reach out uh, to the people of God, uh, to my parishioners, to my spiritual children, to let you know that um, I love you and I'm with you. And um, ah, thank you, Lynn. Um, that I'm here for you and love you. I'm praying with you that although there's at least six feet that we have to be apart from each other, um, that we're not in this, that, that um, we're all, we're still in this together, you know, and um, the body of Christ is something that transcends the physical um, and cannot be broken down or contained uh, by a virus, by, by quarantine, um, by any other um, thing of this earth, you know, um, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, um, and in any form of evil, whether the world, the flesh, or the devil. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know how long this session is going to be, but um, that's kind of the initial thought. You know, I um, it's moving a little hard, a little faster than I was expecting it to. The thing is, uh, I said Mass today at 3 o'clock during the Hour of Mercy um, for, for a purpose, for a reason. Um, of course, uh, remembering all of you, I, every time I say Mass, I pray for my parishioners and my, my spiritual children. Um, and uh, it is awkward as I'll get out to say Mass by myself when it's not my day off. Um, and I don't like it, <laughs> but 
this is what, what we're doing. We, 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 the bishop has made a decision, and, and we may not like it. We may not. Um, um, it's good to see you too, Judy. Um, even though I can't see you, the very fact that you're there. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. You know, we may not like it or agree with it, but um, know that our bishop is, is doing, making decisions bigger than, than um, I, I thought, you know, bigger than, he, he doesn't get paid the big bucks, but there's a, um, a heavy cross that he's wearing as our bishop, and he's the apostle, uh, the successor of the apostle for Wichita Diocese, um, and we need to, pr to trust him and pray for him. And and, and um, let him know uh, that uh, that we love him, um, and lean into and, and, and be a rallying point. Um, I'm rambling. There's two things that stuck out to me that in yesterday's reading and today's reading um, that really speak to what we're going through right now. Um, and I, I wanted to, in lieu of obviously a homily being heard um, last night and tonight, um, thought I'd give a little bit of that reflection. Um, the Yesterday's first reading was from the prophet, book of the prophet Daniel. I'm just going to read it um, just because it's beautiful. So Azariah stood up in, in, in the fire and, and prayed aloud, For your name's sake, O Lord, do not deliver us up forever or make void your covenant. Do not take away your mercy from us for the sake of Abraham, <clears throat> your beloved, Isaac, your servant, and Israel, your holy one, to whom you promised to multiply their offspring like, like the stars of, the he of he heaven or the sand on the, of the shore of the sea. For we are reduced, O Lord, beyond any other nation, brought low, everywhere in the world th this day because of our sins. We have in our day no, pre no prince, prophet, or leader, no burnt offering, sacrifice, oblation, or incense, no place to offer for first fruits, to find favor with you. With, but with contrite heart and humble spirit, let us be received as though it, it were burnt offerings of rams and bullocks, or thousands of fat lambs. So let, let our sacrifice be in, your, be in your presence today, as we follow you unreservedly. For those who trust in you cannot be put to shame. And now we follow you with our whole heart. We, we fear you and, and pray to you, do not let us be put to shame, but deal with us in your kindness and great mercy. Deliver us by your wonders and bring glory to your name, O Lord. And this, like, I was saying Mass. So, the context of me here at reading this yesterday during Mass was, it was, uh, I am... <laughs> Full, full transparency, and I'm not exactly proud of this, but I didn't think this was all going to hit on Tuesday. Um, spring break, I thought, you know what, I'm going to get away for a day and a half. Um, spend some time away with a friend of mine, because I figured, you know what, we're probably going to not be, uh, we're probably going to be locked down for a while. And so I actually went up to Benedictine College, uh, which there are no kids there, but one of my best friends from college is an RD up there. And so I left, I got there about 3 o'clock, and then uh, to just to spend the day with him, just to, just to, because I haven't seen him in a while. And plus, I did have some business. He's getting married this summer, hopefully. Oh, he's getting married. I just don't know where now, because uh, he's supposed to get married in California. But um, obviously, things are up in the air. But my point is, um, so I met with him and his fiance and, and went over some marriage stuff. And then I got a call about 10 o'clock from another brother priest who said, uh, have you heard, did you check your email? And of course, the email that I had was the letter. The bishop was suspending masses. Um, and and so I'm like, okay. So I spent the next hour and a half um, making phone calls and reaching out and, and so on and so forth. Well, I didn't. I ended up making it back um, about five o'clock and then we had a meeting with the 
with Janet, it, we had a meeting, a Zoom meeting with principals and pastors. So I finally, at six o'clock, go over to the church, and I set up for mass, um, and I start saying mass, and that's when I took the picture before I said mass that I that I posted yesterday on Facebook. Um, and I started reading this reading, and I had to stop. Yeah, because I got choked up a bit. And the reason why it choked me up is because of this line. No burnt offerings, sacrifice, oblations, or incense. The context of this letter is, is during the Babylonian exile. So, if you know the story, Azariah and Mishael, um, Hananiah, Azariah and Mishael, and Daniel are people who are, who are taken from Israel. Israel has been conquered by the Babylonians, and they are basically made to be um, the educated you know, people that, to serve Nebuchadnezzar the king. And uh, so this is a time where the temple was destroyed. They had no place to worship. And so, you know, when, when he says, you know, we have, uh, in our, we have in our midst no prince, prophet, or leader, no burnt offerings, sacrifice, oblations, or incense, no place to offer our first fruits to find favor with you, it was very like it was very reminiscent of oh my goodness this is kind of where we are in a moment that it you know before one o'clock yesterday you could come to mass every day and now although the celebration of mass continues so we're, we're not in the same boat as them the ability to come and share in that is almost like stripped away in a moment and it was very emotional to think, oh, we're kind of in the same boat as the Israelites. We are unable to come together and sacri offer sacrifice. The difference is, of course, that the Mass is far exceeding and far expanding than any sacrifice that was offered in the Temple. So we're not in the same boat, but the, the, the heart of, of the prayer that is being said is, I could hear the people of God, I could hear you speaking these words to me, and, and I had to stop for a moment and, and catch my breath. But this is such a beautiful, so, and, and then the line, so let our sacrifice be in your presence today. You know, as though it were um, burnt offerings of rams and bullocks or thousands of fatted lambs, so let our sacrifice be in your presence today as we follow you unreservedly. That realization that although we cannot come together and be present together in Mass, we can still offer our sacrifices to the Lord. We can offer that, that pleading and that pain in our heart that says, I so desire to be with you, Lord, in the Mass, but I, there is something preventing me that's outside of my control. And I need to offer that to you. And to, to invite you into the pain in my heart, the pain of separation. For those who trust in you cannot be put to shame. Now is the time to lean into the trust that we have in the Lord. The trust that he will provide for us, that he is with us, that he has not abandoned us. This is the time to focus in and lean in on the domestic church. That each family, each household is the domestic church. And to remember that Christ is present in the Eucharist. Christ is present in the priest, but he also said, where two or three are gathered in my name, so there I am in your midst. And that every time we read scripture, Christ is present in the scriptures. And so those are the ways in which we are really needing and, and, and being called to invite the Lord into our homes. Um, so deliver us by your wonders. You know, do not let us be put to shame, but deal with us in your kindness and great mercy. Um, so that was kind of, all of that happened kind of in my mind and is going through my mind, you know, as everything that's going through my mind is swirling yesterday. And then today, there was an, uh, again, um, not not from from Daniel. The other thing, here's another thing, and this, here's another thing, sorry. And it's because I reread it today after Mass because I knew I was going to try this out. Um, and... Something struck me. The first line 
Azariah stood up in the fire and prayed aloud. And I thought, wait a minute. When is this happening? This is, if you heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Nebuchadnezzar throws them into the fire, right? He throws them into the fire, and the they're like, they're not even consumed. And the fire is like burning hotter, like ten times hotter. So hot that people who are stoking the fire get consumed with the fire. And they're like, wait a minute, didn't we throw three people into the fire? And we see four. And the fourth one looks like the son, a son of God. Basically an angel protected them. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's their Babylonian names. Their, Israel, their Hebrew names are Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. Azariah, Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael. And this, and is he is saying this while standing in fire. He is saying this while standing in the middle of a furnace and not being consumed. And it blew my mind. Like, oh my goodness. How powerful that is. How even more powerful as he is standing, as he's being delivered by God, he's praying for deliverance. And praying that the sacrifice that he is able to give is, will be received and that God will respond in kindness and love and mercy. And so then today, our first reading is from Deuteronomy. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the, the, the line that stuck out to me, um, for what great nation is there that has, that has God so close to it as the Lord, our Lord, our God? It is... It is us. It it is to all right. Sorry. Uh, close to the Lord, our God is to us when 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 we call upon Him. Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? However, take care and be earnestly on your guard not to forget the things which your own eyes have seen, nor let slip from your memory as long as you live but teach them to you teach them to your children and your children's children and that's again stuck out to me because in my mind I'm thinking again we're the new Israel we're the, pe we're the people of God we're the body of Christ for what great nation is there that has God so close to us as the Lord our God. That God is with us. In an even, even more profound way. The Israelites, God was in their presence, like in the Holy of Holies, in, 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 in the, 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 um, the tent, you know, the meeting tent, the meeting tent that eventually was replaced by the temple. So, He is present among them. Like, we're reading again in, in the liturgy of the hours. We're reading Exodus and how when they when they were brought from their captivity of slavery, the column of smoke and at night column of fire is what led them, led them out of Egypt. God was a, was with them, and God is with us with us here in the church in an even more profound way than in the Israelites. In the Israelites, we have. Him present in the sacraments. That every time, and I, this is something that I learned in college, every time you pass a church, you make the sign of the cross, right? Because Jesus is present in the church. Every Catholic church. God is present within each of us who are baptized. His sanctifying grace lives within us. His sacraments are that living water that I talked about this last weekend that flow and the church that living water that flows into us and so to remember that take care and be earnest and on your guard not to forget 
the things which your eyes have seen, nor let, let them slip from your memory as long as you live. To not forget those moments of grace that you received while encountering the sacraments. Those moments of prayer that you've had. Those moments of consolation that the Lord has given you in the past. That those are the things that we remember um, in times of darkness, in times of desolation, in times of where we're tempted to despair. And so, to remember that, that we don't know exactly how long this is going to last. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But to not despair. To remember the goodness of the Lord and that the Lord loves you and is as close to you as he was in those moments of consolation. Even if you can't feel him. And to be patient. Be patient with, with me. I am working as hard as I can. And my intent is to get this the Facebook Live thing figured out to the point where we can live stream Mass. I can live stream Mass on Sunday. You know, and, and uh, as many other priests have been doing, and I know I could easily just say, ah, watch EWTN or watch this priest or that priest. But I want you to see me, and I want to. I want to see you as 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 much as I can. I want you to know that I am praying for you, um, and I want it to the best, not in a prideful way, but in a in a. Uh, I want to. I want you to know. I want you to see my face. Um, so I don't know how often I'm going to do this as often as I have something to say, I guess. Um, and hopefully we can find a rhythm of life um, until we can be together again in a larger group. Um, I've got a meeting, a, a Zoom meeting um, tomorrow with the bishop. I think all the priests are, are going to be a part of that. I don't know if that, I don't know why I wouldn't be able to tell you that, but um and I'm going to ask some questions about uh, confession um, and how we can work that out while still having social distancing and all that junk. Um, um, I've got some ideas of how we can make that work. Obviously, uh, public we're not having a penance service. This uh, no, in the case you didn't know that. Um, obviously, we're not going to have a penance service like we had intended. Um, but I still want to find a way to offer confession. Um, but it's going to look different. And I've got to figure out how that works. So know that I'm working on that as well. Because um, I know many of you probably want to go to confession. Um, or need to go to confession. Or whatever you are in that. Um, but but I'm, I'm working on that. So... Um, so that's what I have in this moment. Um, know that I love you that I'm, I'm keeping you close to my heart and I'm praying for you and um, that I have not abandoned you um, not that you thought I did but I feel the need to say that um, I will give you you know in the bulletin um, the number that uh, the sacramental emergency line, if you want to talk to me, um, know that, that that number is available um, for you to get a hold of me. Uh, if you have questions or concerns, um, if I can figure out again. Um, so know that there is a form of communication I'm going to put that in the, uh, put that in the chat. 
Oh, this thing, there's a lot more people. I didn't realize I needed to scroll down. Um, put that in the chat. Um, um, so, this should be the first of many moments like this. Um, hopefully they'll get better and better and smoother and smoother as, as the days go on. Um, again, pray for me. Stephanie Williams is also helping, helping me figure out some of the technical things. Uh, so pray for her as well. Uh, if you got ideas, uh, throw them my way, um, more, um, so that we can, we can figure out the best way to get around and get out to the most people, uh, possible. Um, I know there's a lot more people on Facebook than, uh, than I probably realize. Um, um, but again, so this is about when mass would have been over. So this is about a, a, a mass length's worth of talking. <laughs> um, um, but again, uh, I've I had, it's about all I have to say in this moment, um, but there will be more to come. So again, pray for me. I'll pray for you. We're all in this together. Love you. And, uh, with that, uh, Sign off. Let's say a quick prayer. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for all the gifts you have given us. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon each and every one of us. Um, give us strength and courage. Any fear or, or doubt or anything that is not of you, any spirit that is not of you, in the name of Jesus, may it be cast out to make room for the Holy Spirit. Um, that the Holy Spirit may reside in us, the spirit of peace and trust and confidence. Um, um, we ask this all through Christ our Lord. And uh, calling upon our Blessed Mother, let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And I don't know if how this works, but I'm going to bless you and I don't think it'll travel through Facebook, but God, God will give you the blessings. So may God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.